So tonight I'm going to talk about Etsy Keeper. Uh, Etsy Keeper was created by Joey Hess. Uh, it is a, a tool for keeping Etsy, your configuration files, in a revision control system. Uh, one of the nice things about it is it doesn't care which revision control system. To some extent, it supports four or five of them, uh, all ones that we commonly use. So Git, BZR, uh, CVS, uh, SV, actually, CVS in there, but Subversion. So it's, it's, it supports quite a few. You can use whatever you want. Uh, as long as it's one of them. Um, it also ties into the package management system, so when you do package installs and package removals, it'll, it'll uh, automatically run and catch the, t the differences that were made by um, package uh, changes. Um, and then, of course, you can run it by hand if you're going through and making configuration changes. Um, now, why would I want to keep Etsy in revision control? Well, there's a couple different reasons personally for why I want to do it. One is, of course, we need backups, right? So anything that matters, we should back up. If, it does, if, you don't need a, if you don't need to back it up, delete it. Well, we're not likely to just remove Etsy, at least not expect our system to keep working. Um, so we need a backup. Now, revision control itself isn't backups, but that if we're backing that up, we're getting not only the backups, but we're getting the changes that are going through. We're also getting comments about what was changed and why it was changed, hopefully. Um, at least that's an option with revision control, not that everybody does it. Um, but we have ways of convincing others to, to add that in when they forget to do so. Um, so we can track the changes that are taking place. We can also track changes that took place because of package ads, package deletes. Um, so we can track things that are happening automatically. And of course, you can set up a cron to automatically check things every night or every hour to see if things have changed uh, based on what is in your revision control system. So you can be notified if something has changed. Um, the, and you can, of course, since it's revision control, you can also automatically back those changes back out uh, if you don't want them if you don't want them to be in place, depending on if you want uh, which way you want to go with that proactive uh, viewing. Um, oops, wrong window. Alright. So, yes, Larry. So it could back out the changes in Etsy, mm -hmm. but if those changes resulted because of, say, the installation of a package, it isn't going to back out that package. The, it won't do that automatically by just doing a revision, con, uh, a revision reversion, right? Um, but since the package management system is hooked into Etsy, if you install a package, it will or into Etsy Keeper. Uh, when the package configuration changes due to the package installation, right. Etsy Keeper will all there already grab it. So um, if you were to, to install something uh, a different way, for instance, if instead of using a package, you copied some stuff over to user local bin and threw an init file in place and then forgot to run Etsy Keeper, then it depends on what your local policy would be. Okay. But say even you did use the package manager, mm -hmm. you would still have to know that the changes that were being backed out of Etsy go along with uh, backing your package up to whatever was there before, either nothing or whatever version was there. Before. Yeah, if you and it doesn't do that, you would have to know. To do yes, that. and that's where those some of those comments come in. Okay. If, the, so yeah. the comments, if you're having it automatically happen from the package installation system. Does that put comments in there and say we went from version so and so to version so and so? It it tracks what changes were made. But let me back up a little bit since because I forgot we're taping tonight or disking whatever we're doing um, <laughs> and buying discs really well. Um, yes. Um, so let me go ahead and, and try to repeat the questions of the you know conversation we just had. So you were asking about if I back out a change via revision control and the change was made due to a package installation, the revision control system doesn't automatically revert the package back to the previous version. Um, then the, the follow-up question that you had was, uh, does Etsy Keeper put in a comment about what this package change was? Etsy Keeper does put in a comment about what was changing. Um, and I haven't looked at the exacts recently, but I think it tells you what package it's installing. Um, so you would be able to see at least which package went in. I don't know if it tells you which one it was replacing. So you might have to dig a little bit in order to, to find that uh, to be certain. Um, but yes, you would be able to look at the comments and see what changed so that you could then go back those out manually. 
uh, well not manually, but by back, back them out by doing a package uninstaller reverting to an older version. Uh, does that answer your questions? Yeah, um, one would then think though that you could also look at those comments and say that it was, uh, you know, the pack you had the package manager upgrade you from version two to version three. That if you had the package manager revert you to version two, mm -hmm. then it would take care of both things for you. Yes, what you would have is you would have old version of the configuration file, new version of the configuration file, and then old version of the configuration file yeah. again. Which is what we would normally do with, if you weren't doing revision control, yeah. you would have that, and so that would still work the same way. Um, and then Etsy Keeper again would automatically do the check-ins for you. Um, the, what Etsy Keeper is giving you is now a different log of that. Um, that information, depending on which system you're using, is also logged in VAR, uh, VAR log under different uh, mechanisms. So, for instance, uh, APT and dpackage lo log that in var log, I think RPM does as well. So you can also look at those. And the difference is that logs will be rotated and they might disappear if the change was made like six months ago. Whereas with it being in a revision control, it'll still be there. All right? Cool. So why do we want to use a revision, or, or why do we want to use different things? So I can, can't see it here. So, uh, first thing is RCS deficiency. RCS being revision control systems, not specifically RCS, the revision control system, but that also has the same deficiencies. Um, so some of the deficiencies have, they don't track file permissions. Those are really important. Um, you know, it took me uh, a couple of days to get uh, NetSaint running way back when it was still NetSaint um, because I had changed the ownership of a file and the permissions of a file, and that wasn't documented anywhere that you needed to have specific owners and permissions permissions for a file. Um, and uh, so it took me a while to, to figure out that what that particular problem was, um, which was a pain. Well, if you're backing something out via revision control um, and you end up changing the permissions or the ownership on a file because revision control doesn't track those, that becomes a problem. So Git tracks those in an external file that it keeps in revision control so that you can, you can uh, when you replace a file or change something via the revision control system, you get the, the changes back. Um, same thing, so f for permissions and ownership, you get both of those. Um, those can also be, the, been, then also be used for doing audits. Um, so uh, speaking of security gigs, uh, I had a security gig a decade ago taking care of a system that had the uh, a company that had the ROM and worm uh, going through their system, which was a uh, Red Hat 7, Red Hat 6, Red Hat 6 exploit. Um, so it's been a while, um, but they had done a bunch of Red Hat installs and done zero security updates. If they'd done any security updates, it would have fixed the problem, but they had done none. Um, and uh, they didn't know what it was. I figured out what it was because permissions had changed on a couple files in, in Etsy, as it was, uh, where the immutable flag had been tossed on. Since that's something we don't normally do in most systems, and they didn't know what it was, so I know they didn't do it by hand, themselves, that told me what that something had got in there and it took a couple of minutes to figure out what had, what had hit their machines. Um, and since uh, at the time that was also the latest, greatest version of Red Hat and it was running full bore on their network, and every time you would try to install Red Hat on their network, it would get compromised before you could even log in. Um, so that made it a little bit more fun. Um, but with Etsy Keeper, you could be using, doing automatic um, uh, uh, checks so similar to a file permissions check, a file system check that you get from uh, other packages, you could be running out of um, Etsy Keeper to make sure your, your permissions and ownership in Etsy haven't changed uh, beyond what you've wanted. Uh, it also does empty directories. Now, if it's empty, who cares, right? Well, you know, um, while I was setting this, this up for to, to do some lab stuff, uh, uh, Etsy Keeper was complaining that directories didn't exist. Um, and whether or not they had any information in them, I think didn't actually matter for a couple of them. Um, in fact, for the one, I know it didn't matter. It just needed to have that directory there. Most RCS systems think if it's an empty directory, it's irrelevant, so who cares? Well, there are some places for a system where it does matter. So Etsy Keeper takes care and tracks those for us as well, so we can get those back. Um, now also takes care of special files, Unix sockets, name pipes, and whatever is falling off the end there. Uh, hard links. Hmm, Handles. What? Handles? Handles? Yeah. Uh, name pipes are, yeah, so they're in there. 
So hard link, so it takes care of those, those types of things for us as well. Uh, again, things that RCS systems don't handle very, uh, usually don't handle very well. Um, so let's talk about setting it up. Uh, first, of course, you need a system. As oops. there we go, with a somewhat blank screen. <laughs> first of all, you need a system installed with Etsy and Etsy Keeper installed. There we go. Not good. This there, all right? Um, and the next thing you need to do is go through and init it. And before I actually do that, I'm going to show behind another screen. So this is the, the uh, uh, readme file for Etsy Keeper. Oops. All right. There you go. So back on my main screen, you can see the full file name. Uh, user user share doc Etsy keeper uh, readme.gz and then if you search in there for tutorial see how well I can type without looking at the screen and then go down to the second instance this will walk us through setting it up it really if you it, read the rest of it but you can skip down to this and be up and going in a couple minutes so this thing t tells you to do an init to go ahead and start up Etsy keeper um, but I forgot one step. There we go. Because um, it's already set up for me in, in this particular case. But oops. So Etsy Keeper Conf. And you go through and make sure you set up the version control system that you want. So uh, on Ubuntu, for whatever reason, they default to BZR. Even if you've got Git installed and you don't have BZR installed. Um, and they don't default to installing BZR. I don't know why they do it this way. Uh, the default for Etsy Keeper is Git. Uh, on Debian, it stays with the default. Um, I don't know what they do on uh, Red Hat flavors on SUSE. Um, so, uh, but you need to change that uh, to begin with. Otherwise, we're going to get the you're going to get the wrong uh, revision system. BZR is closely associated. Ah, is that okay? I would think it would be behave. Yeah, that's right. Uh, what the heck's the resize thing for screen? Uh, all right, well, I'll just live with it. All right, so as it said in the uh, readme, do an Etsy keeper init. So that'll create your revision control set, your uh, repository. Um, it doesn't actually check anything in. So we've got a lot of things to, to get installed. All right. Is that created a, a Git repository in Etsy? It's in Etsy. Yep. So the so the question was whether or not that creates a, a Git repository in Etsy. It does. Uh, and if you watched before I had gone through and cleared the screen, I had just removed that directory um, because I'd done a, a test in it to make sure I had everything set up again properly. Um, so it goes through and creates that that um, and uh, there we go. It also, since we're here, Hans will learn to type someday. Also sets up get ignore with a lot of files that you don't want to get in there. So um, now that you've looked at them, what are some of the files that we would not want to have in our revision control system possibly? Ten files from editors. Itself. Itself. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Recursively check yourself in. Yeah, that could be fun. Are there any other files in Etsy that might be uh, special or need need extra protection? Maybe. Some lost files. Shadow files. Shadow files. One of the big ones. So files that have actual password credentials in there. You can add them if you want. Um, but I believe that, that Etsy Keeper defaults to not putting them in there um, because we don't want an extra copy of those floating around um, that isn't getting proper scrutiny. Um, so there's files that you might not want to back up. Uh, and and get, takes care, or, uh, Etsy Keeper automatically checks some of those in. Uh, it's been a while since I've done an audit of what they track. Uh, um, uh, so I don't know exactly what they're doing right now. 
Um, but there, you can also add files that you might want to ignore. Um, so for instance, I had a, uh, an instance for, uh, the, for my day job where I needed to be able to uh, only put part of Etsy into Etsy Keeper uh, for a particular uh, backup that I was doing in a particular project. So I did a git ignore for everything but the thing that I wanted. Um, so I could just use Etsy Keeper and not have to uh, dive into the things that it's doing and, and re-engineer it in any way. Um, and it just took a couple minutes to set that up uh, and, and get things backed up like I wanted them. Uh, and then I was able to check out on a different system and basically keep those two um, uh, configurations in, in sync uh, without having to do any extra uh, modification on my own. So now if I, if on that pair of HA machines, if I modify um, the, that particular, uh, those particular tools on either of the machines, the other one automatically gets it. So, all right. Uh, so we did the git init. Um, so again, I've skipped over choosing, sorry. Um, so I mentioned choosing, I choose git. Use whichever one you want. Um, make sure you know how to use it or get to, know, to learn how to use it via using Etsy Keeper, whichever the case may be. Um, then back to the tutorial. So we did the init. We saw that uh, I did a status to show that things aren't checked in. So we can do an initial check-in. Uh, since I'm not using VZR. Okay. And we can see that I've now checked in the changes that I made. Um, if I go through and change a file, uh, so let's uh, Make sure it's something important, of course. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, what there you go. So we can now see that something's modified. Um, and I'm glad that the, the presentation is a surprise for all the rest of you as well. So let's see if I can change this. I still didn't do it right. Oh, there we go. Okay. Cool. Alright. So I've made a change. I can see that I made a change. I can check it in. So we can interact with it. It's revision control. It's, it's, it's just Git. So whatever you can normally do with Git, we would be able to do it here as well. All right. So do the initial check-in. He goes through and walks through. You can make some changes. I just did something other than changing the password. Um, and then he talks about some different uh, 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 changes you can make from the default. The one that I first looked at that I thought was pretty cool was setting it up where it'll automatically compress your um, repository for you. Etsy is not really big compared to a lot of other things that we do, um, but it can get big, especially if you make a lot of changes and you're keeping it all in a revision control system. Uh, the problem I ran into was that I was using Git in standalone mode, so I wasn't actually backing it up anywhere, and uh, the compressed uh, compression on Git uh, corrupted itself. So I have not yet gotten back to where I trust Git in compressed mode. Um, however, if you were backing it up properly and you could then get to a previous re, uh, re, re, uh, version uh, prior to the compression screwing things up, then you would be safe. Um, so I mention it because 
you might want to use it, at least consider it, uh, even if I'm not using it myself right now. Because um, it did significantly change the size of, of the repository. Uh, if we think about it in general, uh, text will compress 5 to 1 in, in, uh, for GZ. For BZIP2, we can get even better than that. Uh, what we have in Etsy Keeper is all text, and a lot of it's repeated text. So uh, compression can be uh, significant space saving as far as the Git repository goes. Um, also, if you're doing backups uh, you know, from place to place uh, across the internet, it also then reduces the amount of, of things you need, bytes you need to send back and forth that way as well. Um, so it depends on how you want to look at it. All right. So we see here Etsy, Etsy Keeper commit.d. There are several directories in Etsy Keeper, under Etsy Keeper. I don't need that, but uh, they're used in .d uh, directory style, so we can put scripts in there, so we can change what we're doing, config to so we can customize uh, how Etsy Keeper is behaving. Um, I have only played with that once. I had a, a, a different time where I had a special need for Etsy Keeper, uh, so I had it doing something uh, specific. Um, but for the most part, I've just stayed with what the defaults are. Um, but you can go in and do this. Uh, you can see we got the pre-install, post-install. So these are for the package management system. So you can be putting in hooks for Etsy Keeper for your or for your revision control system uh, for when packages are added, removed, etc. Um, so you can you can customize this uh, to a, a very decent amount. Uh, Joey Hess is very good about making tools that are really really customizable. All right, and look at actual the presentation. Okay. We already talked about it to keep get an or checking in. Uh, reviewing these recent changes. So you basically use your revision control system to look at what re, uh, recent changes have been made to this to the system. Uh, and same thing for rolling back. Again, you just use the, the revision control system that you've chosen to roll back ch uh, changes. Um, so it does automatic magic check-ins. I have only used this with Debian-based systems. Uh, so Ubuntu, Debian, and a couple of other uh, um, offshoots. Um, last, I tried to use it with Red Hat. Uh, it was available for, Dor for Fedora, but I needed it to, to work on CentOS. And at the time, it was not working properly under CentOS. Uh, and I haven't needed anything Red Hat-based for a couple of years now. So I haven't looked at it. I know other people were using it, and it was, again, hooked into RPM. So you were getting the revision or the package management hooks as well. Um, I just have not personally done that. Um, and it's been a couple of years, so I'm certain that, that it, things have gotten easier and it's probably in uh, RHEL or, or CentOS at this point. I just haven't needed to care. So, and as I said, the, uh, so the check-ins, it's also got automatic triggers, which was that D directory, so you can go through and add hooks so it'll automatically do things as you add, remove, change, et cetera, et cetera. So it'll, it'll watch a directory and if, there, if a new file uh, shows up, that can trigger uh, a backup. So yeah, you could you could set up your own hook to do anything you can do with the shell script at that point. Um, so yes, if you want to trigger a backup, uh, if you want to trigger a automatic post to social uh, media about saying something derogatory about the NSA, you can get it to do that as well. So right. <laughs> well, there is a sleep function for shell, so there's a possibility. All right. <laughs> All right, uh, any other questions? Oh, I didn't repeat those questions. You said, uh, um, what was the question again? I'm sorry. Can you have it uh, watch a directory so that it will um, do a backup when it, it sees a new configuration file? Okay, so for the Jeopardy version of this presentation, the question was, can you have it watch a directory so that when it sees a change in that directory, it automatically kicks off some kind of action? And the answer was yes. Is still yes, really. <laughs> All right. Well, in this particular, like a cron job type? yeah. So you would have to do a cron job. So when you tell Etsy Keeper to go look at Etsy and it notices a file has changed, um, so you could tr have things triggered to do that. Um, so, for instance, if you've got a way of triggering anytime you you edit a configuration file. Um, you could kick off Etsy Keeper, or you could set it up in cron um, to go through and do it. I don't think it's actually hooked into a, uh, a mechanism that'll watch the file system. 
Um, but of course, if you set that up, you could have that mechanism kick off Etsy Keeper to go through and do things, or just directly do the trigger. Uh, any other questions? No. Nope. Really easy to use, fairly easy to set up. Um, the big thing was when I found the tutorial, you know, after reading five or six pages of man page first. Um, once I ran into that, I had Etsy Keeper up and running a couple minutes doing the things I needed to do. And uh, honestly, the, the, the difficult part for me at that point was remembering how to do stuff in Git. Because um, I just don't use it that often. Um, and it's, but it's a great tool. Uh, it has saved my bacon in a couple of cases. Um, and uh, I would love to get us using it at work. Um, even though we are making it to where people can't automatic can't log in and make changes to the revision to the to Etsy at all, we're we're getting to where we're using um, proper tools for that, which is awesome. Um, but I would still love to be able to track changes that are going on. Um, and some of the systems that I run actually do have an Etsy Keeper on there, so I can track what CF Engine did to me today, without having to parse CF Engine lo logs, which are horrendous. Yes. Promise. <laughs> uh, the question uh, is. Uh, have you had this? Have you found this useful uh, with deploying, uh, for example, a cluster where you have several entities that you want to keep in in sync? Is this? I, I haven't done it to that extent. I've done it for a small cluster, so a pair of machines. And basically, as I said, what I did is I set it up to where Etsy Keeper was just watching the directories I cared about for the particular services. Because the nice thing is that they're they are services that keep two machines in sync, but the thing that they don't keep in sync is their own configuration files. So I used Etsy Keeper to put both of them into revision control you know, on both machines. And then I used SSH and cron to make sure that um, those two were being kept in sync. Um, and then use the, basically use the revision control system to push, pull, and et cetera um, to keep them set up. And it worked well for me. I, you know, I don't make changes to those systems very often. Um, but when I do, they automatically get pulled to the other machine. I don't have to, I don't have to um, worry about it. In, in this case, the Git repository doesn't have to be local in Etsy. You could have it, you know, off on the network somewhere. In, in my particular, yeah. In my particular case, I do. I actually have the, the Etsy Keeper Git repository in a different directory. That way, if somebody ever goes and sets up Etsy Keeper by itself, it'll still break my functionality, unfortunately, but at least it won't clobber my, my uh, setup. Um, and then I can yell at them because they shouldn't have been changing my box, um, and then uh, put things back into to proper order. Um, but yeah, I've got that in a, in a different file system, um, and then uh, I have uh, SSH. And part of the reason for do putting a different file system is I don't have to do SSH as root in order to do the things that I want to do, um, because the particular files that I'm backing up don't need uh, root permissions uh, uh, in order to sync the repositories. Um, and then I use root on the local on each local box to sync back out of the the master git repository, so to speak. Yes. Can you explain how you did that? Did you manually set the git or environment variable or put it in a configuration file? Or? I can't explain how I did it because I did it a year and a half ago and <laughs> I it's flushed from cache. But yeah, I, I basically set um, the, the idea I got it from is actually what Joey Hess has done about getting your home uh, directory into revision control. Um, so he has, um, I've done that as well. I just used, you know, CVS and Subversion to, to put my home directory, at least my dot files, into revision control. But again, ran into the limitations because of um, uh, permissions and everything. But the other thing is um, that I want different things into different repositories because I don't want my Vim configuration files and my Bash configuration files in the same repository because they, they do different things. And I, and I sync them differently. Um, and uh, one of the things that Joey's done a lot of work on is making that somewhat easier to do. It's still a really confusing setup. Um, and he created a tool called MR for managing repositories. So you can go through and, and do things. The problem is finding, like, what is the name of MR package on this system? Well, if you search for, just search for MR, you get 10,000 entries. Um, luckily, it's, it's actually MR in Debian space systems. But you have to install it first. Asking for what the package is to install it. Is it by default? Yeah, I didn't install it. Oh, cool. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so anyway, so I, I basically used information from what they do 
um, and just said, okay, I'm going to do it in Etsy instead of my home directory. Um, and there was a, um, uh, yeah, I think I said git deer uh, as the, uh, the, the um, variable to point out where the actual git directory was. Um, and there was a couple of other things that I had to customize uh, in order to get it to be somewhere else. Um, so, and of course, the other thing you could do is have a local git directory that then pushes and pulls from a central repository, which is probably what Linus would tell you you're supposed to be doing. Um, but uh, again, in this case, I wanted to make sure that the git uh, directory wasn't actually an Etsy um, so that I wouldn't run into problems with somebody else coming in. Um, and specifically also to make sure that CF Engine wouldn't boink things up really badly. Oh. Uh, let me, Mitch? If you were to inadvertently change one of the permissions in a, on one of the files in Etsy, how does Etsy Keeper let you know that happens? Well, if I do a git status, it'll let me know. So let's, uh, uh, wrong, wrong thing here. Yeah, CF Engine will just back uh, away. Uh, there we go. So if anybody wants to change my Motorola daemon, uh, no, um, <laughs> message, <laughs> message I was working for Motorola the first time I ran into that. I'm like, what the hell did we put this on every machine for? Uh, message of the day. Um, so if we want to change that, you know, if you want to break into multiple layers of boxes to get to that, you can change it now. Um, so uh, uh, let's see. So Git doesn't tell me, and uh, is it status for Git Keeper as well? No. Uh, is it stat? No. Nope. There's a way for Etsy Keeper to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, just LNS and That's what it looks like. LNS and CPU. Yeah. Unclean. Unclean? It returns the non-direct stuff. All right. You have to put it in here. Oh, I fix my prompt. Oops. Or just do this. <laughs> uh, this is an old system. I don't have. I have frowny faces if things fail in my prompt on, on newer systems. All right. Um, so, yeah. And, 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 well, I, I ran into that ran into that years ago, but the the problem is I figured it resets dollar question mark, which I don't want to do because I want to see what dollar question mark is. But it doesn't actually reset dollar question mark. Once I figure that out, I've been putting it everywhere. So it's awesome. So um, uh, remind me, I'll post it to plug list. Somebody remind me. Uh, so anyway, so Etsy Keeper has a way. I don't know off the top of my head, obviously, um, as I've just proven. Um, but it does have a way for you to go through and, and uh, detect that. I did notice when you were doing the initial commit, it, was said, it said it was adding files with a particular permission, a particular mode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's actually got a file. Yeah. The, the, yes, it doesn't. Yeah. Does it? Last I looked at it, it didn't at all. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Okay, and can you tell Git then what what permissions to put on it afterwards? There is a way to tell Git. Hey, can I want to change the permission? Okay. But it's, by default, it's just going to force it to whatever it was when it was created. Okay. Well, that's at least a good start there because I've had had them change change permissions to something that just absolutely doesn't make sense. Um, so I don't remember where uh, Etsy Keeper stores it, but it's got a uh, a file where it stores all the ter permissions. Um, so you can look at look at them there, um, and as you said, if you if you add something, it'll do it. So let's do. Well, let's just so that the people are saying you can do it. Keep the pre-commit to see 
wasn't changed. Uh, that's, that's the reason why Mark Moore was here at that time. Yeah. You're running an Ubuntu? My yeah. Ubuntu uh, LTD is not in FC. There's some directories in FC. Uh, is, is it that one that's still created dynamically? <laughs> yeah, but I changed. Well, that's right. It's a link. So, okay. Um, so, uh, uh, the other one. Sorry. Banner. Banner? Does that exist? No. Uh, all right. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Oh, there we go. Hey. So if I modify a file that's modifiable, that'll make more... <laughs> but it might explain why I couldn't find it. If you change it to 666, will it still show up as modified? Yeah. Okay, well, uh, well, <laughs> so, anyway, but the, the, so the, um, uh, hmm? Go, yeah. go ahead and do it, okay. What does git dist tell you? All right, hold on a second. <laughs> All right. Doesn't get revert to it? It changed. Clean first for some reason. Well, no, no, it's looking at the XP keeper, not fast, not fast. Oh. Uh, hmm. Yeah, true. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't have hides in the back of my head, so I don't read things so quickly there. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so there's, there, with these systems, you can you learn a lot more, uh, obviously. Um, but for basic setup, uh, it's fairly easy to get in there. Uh, and if I weren't standing up in front of a bunch of people and I was actually reading the man page, um, <laughs> it'd be easier to figure out. You had a question earlier. Did we get back to it? No. I think we did. Okay. I, I think it got covered. All right. Any, yes, Ed. Once you decide what permissions you want on a particular file, you can put that into the CF Engine and it'll make sure it's that every five minutes. <laughs> <coughs> I won't let it run that often. <laughs> I won't let it run that often. <laughs> Hmm? Yeah, we don't. <laughs> On that file? Yeah, I don't care. Actually, the, I'm, the next thing I'm doing after this is we'll, I'll be deleting that VM. It was made for a test yesterday. The test is over. Um, and the only reason I didn't create a brand new VM for this today was I already had one. So, all right. 
Any other uh, questions? No? Well, thank you for coming out and harassing me a little bit. It's awesome. <laughs> um,